and welcome to Riverside Crafts. I'm Ray and I'm coming to you from my studio today. I'm going to be showing you how I use my jelly paint um, to, with acrylic paints to create monoblock print it, prints. I'm just going to move my camera down so that you can see where we're at. There we go. I think that's right now. There we are. If you've got any questions, if you leave them in the comments, I will answer them at the end. All right. So now, here's my jelly plate. Um, we did look at them the other day, but last time I was on, but I just want to make sure you think, as you can see, it is um, sort of nice and floppy. This one is reasonably well used and I've had it a while, which is why it is slightly yellowed. If you get one new one, it'll be nice and clear. The yellowing and any bits that get stuck around the edges don't actually alter how your jelly plate will work. So don't worry about those. OK, right now. This is what I'm going to be doing with you today. So this is the monoblock printing. Um, I'm going to be making, showing you how I made my own stamps because if you're like me, most of your stamps might be acrylic and if you get any dried acrylic paint on them, it doesn't come off very well and it can damage your stamp. It doesn't happen with red rubber ones as long as you can put them and that, but obviously it's not so easy to put everything straight into water when we are doing in the craft room which probably doesn't have a sink so it's just a, something to be aware of so i'm going to show you how i made my stamps in funky foam and these are just some of the prints now the prints i'm showing you now are all in very bright colors i don't normally work in these colors this is so that i can show you what i have done and you can see it quite well all right now this is the one to, i want to show you to start with because this has got my first and second generation print off this so that means i printed it once and then i was able to get a second print so this is the first print and this is the second print you can still see the remnants of the the green from the stamps and the, the patterns but it's a lot more muted okay so how do i make my stamps i'll show you what they look like first after i've been using them for a bit so this is what they look like when i've been using them they get very grubby and the paint was all dried on them, but it doesn't really matter because of how I'm using them on my jelly plate. All right. But if I did this with my acrylic stamps, they would be ruined. So this is a, a nice way of, of not panicking about your stamps. So funky foam is die cut. OK, um, and I die cut it. This one is um, actually from the River Cutside Crasp Dyes range. Um, I think it was Wild Flowers, if I remember rightly. Now, I glue mine together with Mod Podge. I find that that works better. Tried lots of other different what, thing, ways of gluing it, um, the funky foam. And to be honest, this one for me seems to hold. So this is Mod Podge matte. I don't want a lot of glue because obviously it's going it, it's the more on it, the more slippery it will be. So I'm just going to put it on. As you can probably see, I'm using two layers of funky foam. That's so I've got good depth in what I'm doing. Get that the right way around. That would help. So it matches it up. And I just put it into place. And hold it there until it dries, sort of thing. And then that will give me a new stamp to use with my um, acrylic paints. Now... It's actually stuck onto a piece of foam that I use for pricking for when I'm doing parchment, but this one is actually worn out. So it, using my old pricking mats because they're too damaged now to use with my funky fat to use with my for parchment I mean and I get a second life out of them. Okay. So I can trim off the excess a second because I don't really need all that on there. Um that's over over where I want it. So that's how I've made my own stamps. I like the double layer because I get a decent depth, which helps when I'm printing with them onto the acrylic paint. OK, now on a lot of the things you see on the on YouTube, it tells you to use a brayer. Well, I'll show you what happens when I use a brayer because I slip. Um, and if you're a beginner, I should think most people have the same problem. Do not use the same brayer that you use when you are doing ink work on your jelly plate because it damages, acrylic paint will damage your roller. So use an old one, okay? All right, so you're gonna, you need a thin layer of paint on your brayer and it does need to be thin, a lot thinner than you think. The thicker it is, the more likely it is to slip. So it's not so 
easy to use. So I've got my first layer of colour on there. All right, I'm just gonna, and the paints that I'm using are the um, acrylics, and they're very liquid, and they're by Ducrafts. You can get lots of different brands in this type of bottle, but they're useful in this way because they are very watery and they're not too thick because you don't want a really thick, heavy layer on what you're doing, okay? Okay, so we're just going to put a bit of another colour on, just coming off to a side here. All right, so we've got a little bit of an orange going on it, and I think I'll leave it at that for a minute. I'm going to use my stamps, and I'm going to take some of the colour off at the moment. So if you can see, I'm just lifting the colour. So I'm giving it a, taking some of what I've already put on there off. All right. And I have got all sorts of different patterny bits that I use to help. Now, when I want, if I want to put colour on with my stamps, I will use a dauber, one of these little foam dauber things. Put a little bit of paint on my sponge and I'm going to put it onto my stamp. Okay. like so and I can then put the colour on to my work all right okay so that's that one done and I just dump it off on my on my scrap paper all right now I'm going to just put a little bit more um I'm going to do what they call a texture plate which if you buy them, they're like a bit large rubber stamp that will help lit, that's very floppy and will lift things. This is two layers of funky foam glued together and it works beautifully to lift things off and to give me um, textures on different things. So I'm going to just put a little bit of the orange onto here because I want to actually lay some colour down on my what I'm doing. So I'm just going to put a little bit onto here. I don't want a lot because I'm building this up again, as you remember. Okay, so I'm just putting some more pattern down. Okay. Right. Now I'm going to take a print. But what we will, you would find is that the paint that you first put down is probably dry. And that's quite normal. Now at this point, you can either put a different colour on altogether, and that would be your background paint. Or you use a white, which is what I'm going to do to give you a nice bright finish. Okay. I'm just going to put some white paint on my palette. Okay. I've got a phone, another phone door, but now I prefer to do this because if I put it on my brayer and put the colour on, I tend to end up with a muddy finish. Like this, I tend to just be able to just gently dab it in a very thin layer over what I'm doing, and I don't seem to end up with lots of muddy. Um, finished products because it's very easy to muddy up and end up with it all sort of looking a bit at the end so this just gives me a way of doing it without me getting it too muddy and without putting overly too much paint on what I'm doing so you're only putting a little layer on this will then activate the paints that have dried slightly so that when you come to print them off they will print okay right so I've done that I'm not going to mix it up too much so I don't want to and I'm going to take my first print. So I'm going to push this on here. And I'm going to rub it. Now I'm not using any posh paper or cardstock. This is copy paper. Because I'm tending to make backgrounds um, when I do this. I'm not really making it to, um, to go on cardstock as such. I do put it on cardstock sometimes. But mostly I use copy paper. The sort of thing you'd use for your printer. There you go. So that would be my first print using acrylic paints. Now you can see I've still got paint left on my jelly plate. Now I can either take all that off or I can add to it. Well, on this case, I'm just going to add to it because I have got some colour there and I'm just going to add a bit more colour in, okay? So I'm going to add a bit of lime green in because I quite like these colours together. And I'm going to try again and do it with my brayer without making too much mess. But as you can see, I'm really only putting a light covering on. It's very light. There's not a lot of colour 
um, not a lot of paint going on at the moment because I find that I get in a real pickle if I put too much on. Right, I'm going to use some of my stamps again, this time with a different colour because I want to lift up what I'm doing. Okay, actually, let me see if this one's dry. Yeah, that one's dry enough to use. So we'll use the one I've just made so I can show you how that works. Right, again, I've, I've got a dauber. Okay, mainly because it puts less paint on. So I'm not ending up with it too slippy. Okay. Oh, I've moved it too quickly. There we go. Let's put it back and it'll hold it, hopefully. If not, we don't worry. We'll re glue it later. Right, I'm just going to put this down here. And as you can see, I've got a print from it. All right. And this is how... So I'm now printing with my stamp that I've just made. All right, and creating a pattern and lifting colour as well. So I'm not just leaving colour behind. I am taking colour off. All right, let's put that back on. I normally leave my stamps to dry overnight because um, I find that then I get a better adhesion and it finishes it off better. But I just wanted to show you how it would work while I was doing it. You also can use your stencils quite nicely when you're doing this work. So I'm just going to lay one of my Mylar stencils down. I've got a little bit more of the lime green. I'm going to put it over it and just work it over. Give it a slightly different feel. Okay, so that's that one. I'm just going to put a little bit of hot pink down in my palette. So I've got that. Now, the pink one I'm using is actually a pearlized paint. So it will actually stay shiny after I've used um, it's dry. So you get a, to a little bit of a different look with it, um, which is quite nice. Okay. Put a little bit of this over this side. If you can hear lots of jingling in the background, that's my dog, bless him. He's not been very well, so he's been fast asleep in my, in my chair most of the day. But it would seem that he's just decided that it's now his time to get up and have a wander. But that's fine. I don't think he's going to disturb us too much. So here's another um, of what I call my texture plates that I've made up. Again, it's using um, funky foam, two layers glued together, um, left overnight. And I use them to pick up um off of things and also i use them to put color down so if i want a little bit of color somewhere and i'm not any sort of thing i can just put a bit of color on there to give a different texture okay now that's looking quite busy so i'm going to leave it there for a moment and i'm going to show you something else when we often we hear you should um to use gesso a lot well which is it's, it's brilliant. It's a fantastic thing. Um, and often they'll tell you to put a white paint on top of your jelly plate to help lift it. But if you don't want your colours to stay quite bright and translucent, just going to clear this off a second. I've got to wipe my, my brayer down because it's got paint all over it again. And I don't want that paint now transferring to the one I've just done that's going to be in my print in a minute. Okay, take that piece of paper out of the way for a moment. Next piece of paper. I found this stuff and it is by Pebio. Um, it's a matte gel and basically it's like a clear... Um, brain's not working out gesso okay so whatever it is it's just it clear so you don't end up muddying up what you've just done it just keeps it nice and clean and gives you that nice finish you can get it in gloss i haven't tried it on gloss on my jelly plate i have to say but i quite liked how this gave me a very nice translucent feel to what i was doing Let's 
So that's my first print. Okay, now I'm going to do a second print. And again, I'm going to use the gel because I, want, I don't want to add any colour to this one. I just want to lift more off. So I'm going to go down again using the brayer because I'm using a clear product so I'm not going to muddy up what I'm doing. Piece of paper. Put it in there. It's a great way to lose a day doing this. I have to say it's a great way to lose a day playing with paint and your jelly plate. So you get a more vintage feel. Now there's still paint on there. I can either leave that on and take it and do it again and take another print off it, which I might just do in a second. Let's have a look how much of this I've got left. Not too much, just enough maybe. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to use the other side of this one, the other end, for a minute. So I don't waste paper. And that's a really nice vintage looking print, which has come up quite nicely. So you can keep taking off what you've put on if you layer another, either a white paint or cream or like this matte gel on top of what's already on there so that it activates it again. All right, I'm just gonna clean this off and start again and do a different type of, of um, print a bit for you using more of my stencils so that you can see how we can start it off slightly differently right so that's a clean jelly plate okay colors right we'll start off with a pink um, let's use a different one here we go we're going to use this one and i'm actually going to lay it on there so that, that i'm going to be putting the paint on in different places to give me I'm using my dauber again. Find the dauber works better over top of a stencil to do this as well because it actually gets in, whereas my brayer slides on the stencil and I don't get the paint going underneath it quite so well. Okay, so that's done that one. Let's get my green. Put some green on. Right, that's doing quite nicely there. I'm going to put a little bit of orange on. So I just need to put some in my palette so I don't get it everywhere. Because I'm very good at ending up with lots of paint all over the place. It was last week I had it all over the craft room. I actually somehow carried a bottle that was open upside down across the craft room and got it everywhere. I was not so impressed. It went all down my trousers, all over my slippers, all over the floor, and the dog decided to go for a walk through it. So it was a little bit of a mess. But there we go. It's one of those things that happens, isn't it? Right, so we're going to lift that off now. And as you can see, I've got a really nice geometric pattern coming through. Now I'm going to stamp over this in a moment with more hexagons but in different sizes and shapes because so i've got a different one here so i'm going to put some different color on my my stamp that i made and just put some more hexagons on in different places okay and should we put some teal on i haven't got any of that out yet have we there we go a little bit of teal if it's going to come out today it's getting towards the end of the the pot because i've been using it so much it means i'm gonna to have to pop down to the shop and get some more paints in the week now these bits on this stamp are the waste from the last one so it doesn't the bits that you would normally throw away on your dies when you cut them out actually work really well on your make stamps from because it gives you your negative and your positive to work with which is quite a nice thing to do i'm just going to put that there go in there with a couple on that corner there we go so that's done those quite nicely take off the excess onto my 
bit of paper there. Right, let's turn that one over, get that way up for a minute. Right, done. Now, I think we'll leave that one of there. So now I'm going to, but this time I'm going to put um, the white over the top and lift it so you can see the difference between, to see what happens when the white goes on. Try not to muddy it. Have a bit of look. Some of it's mixing, never mind. We'll see what happens. It'll do what it'll do today. If it's a warm day, it dries quicker and you get a sometimes you get a cleaner print. So right, let's lift that off and see what happens. There we go. There's your number, there's your first print, which is actually quite nice again, isn't it? And it's nice and clean. Right, I'm going to do the second one again using the gel. So I don't really want to put any more paint on there colour-wise. So I'm going to go over with this just to do that, wake it up. Let me paper up. Number two. Right, I'm going to just go, I'm going to do a little bit of over stamping on that one just for a second. With an, this is another um, of the Riverside Craft Stamps. Um, this is the Row of Trees. I have to say, I really like this one um, and I use it quite a lot for different things. And I'm quite chuffed with how the stamp actually works that I made from using the actual stamp in that way i'm quite chuffed with that one let's put that this is the stencil going back on and i'm going to lift some of the paint that's on the stencil off so i'm getting a slightly different print to what i did before more paint right paper put it down before it all dries off too much It helps if you really give it a good rub because it helps to lift the paints off so that you get a cleaner print. And that's the number, that's the third one. So as you can see, so we've done first print, second and third that we've altered. So we've done those today, which and they make a fantastic background. Okay, so we did those ones and then we've got this is where we started, didn't we? And um, these are the three prints we got off the first one that we did, which is quite nice. Okay. And I want to show you how I use my backgrounds because it's all well and good making all these backgrounds, but what do you do with them once you've got them? Because that's the next question. When you've done them all, you're like, ah, had a great fun, made a right mess. What do I do with these now? Well, let's show you for a second. Just clean my brayer off. Put my stencil that's wet still onto my jelly paint because that might pick those colours off and then I can do something with that in a minute. Right, ways I use my prints. But as you know, I, I love art journaling. So this is a jelly plate that prints that I've art journaled and played with. So here we've got the jelly plate prints coming down and across. That's that stamp again, the die that I made from Riverside Crafts, the trees one. It's been chopped into to give me different bits each way, and that's the flowers one. This one is a little bit more simple. Using a hexagon die, I've cut into one of the backgrounds I've made, drawn on them with make to make various stitch types to make it look like a patchwork, which is quite a nice way to do. You could do that on a card as well, and that would look quite nice. 
and this is how I use them if I'm actually making a card up. So this would be a second generation print because it's a bit lighter um, and it makes a beautiful background for your stamps and for your silhouette die cuts. It just really lifts them. So that's the other way that I use my backgrounds quite a lot when I've been doing my jelly paint printing. Right, so this is just going to be... Once you go to this one before we finish, and this is literally just me tapping off the excess paint that was onto my stencil because there was quite a lot of paint on my stencil. Okay, so I've got some come off, not lots, but enough, just a bit to give me a bit of a shape. I'm just going to give this a bit of a squiggle before it completely dries on it. Okay. And I'm going to use a different texture plate to put some texture on here quickly okay and i'm not i'm really randomly putting the paint on this so i don't want i want it to look very vintage not like it's a brand new print from something if that makes sense i want it to look like there's bits missing um and that like it's an old-fashioned wallpaper of types if that makes sense um these are all background dyes that i've had for such a long time i can't even tell you where they came from um because you, if you're like me, you've got dyes that you've had for absolutely years. Um, and you're like, oh, don't know what. You get fed up with them. You don't use them. They sit there. And you're like, oh, I'm not bothered with that one. I'm not going to do anything. Um, I don't use it. And then they are all here. And you're like, hmm, am I supposed to do something with that one, really, I suppose? Can't just leave it. I work on a paper pad deliberately because I make a mess but also because then I've got you never know what's going to turn up sometimes the the bits that come off my paper pad at the end make a really good background so I never worry too much about it and I just work on my paper pad. I'm just putting my clear acrylic gel the matte, the matte gel across my plate again just so that I can lift this print off Now, you can use any coloured paper, but just be think about the colours on that paper. So test your colours first, um, to see if they're going to stand out. And that, because some colours will look better than others when you put the paint on them. But you can do it with black card and you can do it with blue and pink and whatever you like. There you go. There's my vintage background that I've just done using some of the waste off of a stencil and then just a couple of bits off a die cut texture paste and there wasn't a lot of paint on there really um, but using the matte gel has just given it a nice overall finish okay so I hope that's been very helpful to you um, one thing I will say is that you need to make sure you've really cleaned your gel plate off before you put it away because acrylic paint, once it stays there, it stays there. It doesn't go, it is on forever. So just make sure you've cleaned it off properly. I use um, a little a bottle with a little bit of washing up liquid in it just to give it a good clean. Um, and then I go over with just some plain water to make sure that I'm not leaving anything on it that's going to end up making it um, de sort of degrade a bit. So... That. and i use an old tea towel to do the mess the rest of it so that's how i'd finish off with my gel plate i hope you found it interesting and i hope you you like how it works with the acrylic paints and making your own stamps to play with um it just gives you a very different feel than what it does when you're working with inks um and i found the daubers take away that pressure of being good with a brayer um, because you really do need only a small amount of paint on your on your jelly paint. The more you, the thicker you put it on, the more likely you are to end up with it all muddy and um, get mixing all together and not getting a nice clear print. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope that's helped. I shall have a look at your questions if there are any at the end um, and leave any comments, please. And that, and I hope to see you again next time I come and play. Bye bye.